system and in our country and we all kind of have come to expect that to be the way that things work. That is until a really sensational headline comes across social media or people are ranting and raving about a certain situation and we jump to every conclusion known to man and kind of try to write the story in our heads before we even bother to investigate what's true. Um, in fact, I, there's a, an article in the New Yorker magazine from a couple of years ago entitled How Headlines Change the Way We Think, where the author talks about the power of a headline and how through the headline the author can make you set your mind on an outcome before you even read the article. Whether the article supports that or not, you're still likely to come out with the same opinion and a headline can make you or can affect what you remember, what you extract from the article that you read. Um, which is really, really fascinating because we see that through our social media feeds so often and people just jumping the gun to uh, pass judgment on something that they know nothing about. Now, why on earth would I bring that up in a video series that is about biblical home education and parenting? Well, I am glad that you asked. I bring it up because I fear that far too often as parents, we take the sensational headline of what we see or what we are told and we don't take the time to get the root or even the true story of what happened. Um, so this week we're going to look at that, look at the importance of conversations of knowing our children deeply um, and we're going to specifically look at that in light of asking questions. Um, when I was in high school and college, I was able to work for four summers at a Christian uh, camp here within about an hour or two of where I live. And it was a phenomenal time that God did so much growing me and changing me and teaching me. Um, and one of the things that I learned up there that David and I have used countless times throughout our parenting career is the, the thought that questions stir the conscience while accusations harden the will. And we have tried to remember that as often as we can when we are interacting with our children. Now, when it's a disciplinary application for that, um, we try to not be so led by emotion that we just go in with accusations. Because when you lead with accusations, often walls go up and you never really get beyond the surface, the, the fruit of what has happened. Um, you never get deeper to find out the whys. So as parents, we have, we have tried really hard to take the time to go into situations with an open mind trying to make sure that we're getting all the facts. First of all, if, if you have more than one child, you know that when there is an altercation, when there is a conflict among our children, you're gonna get as many accounts of what happened as people that you ask, most likely. So going in with a questioning heart, someone that is actually looking to get to the truth, um, you, you are making allowances for perspective. You're, you're weaving together a much more complete um, story of what happened. But there's a lot more reasons to go in that way. Um, and, and we're gonna look at, at just a few reasons, actually four, of, of the reasons that asking questions of our children, having conversations that start with us trying to, to see what's going on in their heart, why those provide such amazing discipleship opportunities and give us platform to teach them to think and act biblically. Um, the first reason that I wanted to talk about that is a good thing that comes from taking the time to ask questions is it really does build and strengthen relationships with our children. Um, now, when our children are little, things tend to be a lot more black and white, and we are dealing a lot more with the surface issues. Um, you disobeyed, this is what I said to do, this is what you did right in front of me, this is the ramifications of that. And as you're dealing with your small children, um, a lot of times that's as far as this goes, but very early on, they are moving beyond just the black and white and into <laughs> varying shades of gray until you get to the teenage years where 
there's there's a lot more choices, a lot more activity, a lot more shades of gray, and a lot more information that we want to get from them so that we are capitalizing on every opportunity that God gives us to teach them to think and act biblically. So by going in and allowing them to explain what happened, allowing them to explain what's in their heart, by um, taking the time to not just lamb blast them for what we've seen but being adult being self-controlled and giving them the opportunity to, to explain themselves a lot of times they already know that they have sinned they already know that they made a poor choice and by giving them the opportunity to express that we are also allowing them of their own will to apologize to us apologize to whomever to confess to god um, whereas sometimes when we come in with an accusation, the, the neck stiffens, the will hardens, and we find ourselves in more of a battle than we really need to be. So, you know, building those relationships of trust. I trust you. I don't understand why you did this. Why don't you give me some insight? What is going on? What are you thinking? Why did you react this way? That builds and strengthens those relationships. Outside of disciplinary opportunities, questions are a great way to just, just allow our children to talk about themselves. Um, you know, as, as I ask them kind of open-ended questions, sometimes it's, it's more difficult than others to get that out of them. But um, number the, the second point is it is just really a truly great way to get information about and from your children. Um, how many times have you all been in a disciplinary situation where you knew that something was wrong, you knew something was going on, and you were trying so hard to extract from them what it was because you just couldn't quite put your finger on it, um, that you just keep talking? Because that happens to me all the time. There have been countless times through my parenting career that I'll be so burdened for a child and um, they will be so quiet and so unwilling to share their heart with me that I just keep talking and talking and talking until the Lord convicts me for the fact that I'm not listening and I channel my inner syndrome saying, you got me monologuing, you sly dog. Because I do, I just go off monologuing. Um, just trying to say something that I can read in their face that I'm landing. I'm landing on the right thing. So rather than monologuing, let's allow them to talk to us. Let's truly ask questions that are going to get to the heart of the matter where we can get the information of what's in their heart, of what they're, excuse me, of what they're thinking, and so on. Now, this is something that David and I do a lot of outside of disciplinary times. Um, David has a practice and has for a couple of years where he takes each of the boys out for lunch on a regular basis just them just to talk about manly things just to see what's going on in their lives just to hang out and I do the same with the girls and then you know there's overlap he takes out the girls sometimes I take out the boys um, because we want to make sure that we have really good solid relationships with our kids now the questions and the conversations that we're able to have on those one-on-one -on -one times, whether it be a drive, sitting on the back porch, going to get ice cream, going to lunch, whatever, that allows us to have much deeper conversations than we're able to have a lot of times when there are all six of us because when there's all six of us, the conversation is generally um, much sillier, much crazier, much more fun. All of the things that make a really close family so awesome um, but getting out and asking those questions really really strengthens that relationship because our children see that we are keenly interested in what affects them or what they're thinking and quite frankly you're gonna probably get answers to questions that you don't like and as our children are growing and their faith is growing and they're learning more and they're they're confronted by all of these different things. When they say something that is a little out of line, it's not quite biblical, there's deception in there, it gives us the opportunity, if we don't just key on it and you know clamp down, to teach them to think their way through it and become more discerning. So spending that time, and it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. 
but it pays off in multiples as your children get older and they start bringing this stuff to you rather than you having to extract it. Um, so spend the time to ask those questions, not only in disciplinary times, but also just in uh, everyday situations so that you can build and strengthen relationships with your children. The third thing that is a wonderful offshoot of doing this, of asking these questions, is we are truly modeling how our Savior walked and interacted with people on earth. There is a list that I came across that, that is 133 questions in the Gospels that Jesus Christ asked other people. There may be more, that's just one of the lists that I saw. Um, but throughout his time on earth, you see him interacting with people by asking questions to get to the heart of the matter. Everything from, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? He was trying to get them to think about loving their enemies, not just loving and pouring into those for whom it is easy. Um, he asked them, how many loaves do they have? You know, they're sitting there looking at all of these people, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and they're hungry, and the disciples are so frantic. Well, how many loaves do you have? Well, we only have this. And Jesus takes it, and he breaks it, and he teaches them in a tremendous lesson about trusting him that they quickly forget because not too long after that we see another crowd gathered that is very hungry. The disciples are once again very frustrated and what does Jesus ask them then? Well, he says, when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full did you have left? He asks them that in Mark 8 and it's, it's using a question to get them to think. And we are able to do that with our children in tremendous ways where we can just change the course of their thought process by posing a different way or by making them address it in a different way. And so use, use those questions as a way to model how Jesus interacted with people and showed love to people the whole time that he was here on earth. And then finally, it is a tremendous way to get the real motivation behind what's going on. Um, about a week or so ago, I had uh, invited my older son out for brunch because uh, there's a lot of things going on in his life. Um, he's about ready to start college. He's got work decisions and just different things. Um, and I was seeing him make some decisions that I wasn't exactly sure where they were headed, what he was thinking. And I realized that I can sit here and write that story in my head. I can say, this is, oh my word, this must be what he's thinking or what he's doing. Or I could take the time to ask the questions and get the motivation. And I'm so thankful that I did because as we were out and I started asking him questions, the answers that he gave me were very mature. They made a lot of sense. I saw where he was coming from. There were a few things that I was able to kind of redirect with some more questionings um, and help him to, to maybe modify some of his approaches on things. But ultimately, it didn't leave me wondering. It didn't leave me reacting to him based on something that I made up and not something that I asked him. So asking questions is a terrific way to get the real motivation behind what's going on in our children. Again, all of these things are just building and strengthening relationships so that we are teaching them and strengthening and deepening the foundation that is biblical on which they can build their lives so that when they leave our families, they are shot out to do all that God has called them to do and be all that God has called them to be. They won't walk away as so many others have. Now, as I've said over and over and over again, we cannot reproduce in our children something that we don't have. So we cannot teach them to think and act biblically if we aren't in God's word day in and day out, learning how to do that ourselves. So as parents, not only do you need to be investing this time in getting to know your children, but invest the time in getting to know and grow closer to your God. It is critically important to your parenting efforts. I talk a lot about conversations, about knowing God, about how, to, how the Bible says that we should approach parenting in the Teach Them Diligently book. And I, I just really encourage you to pick one up. I think that it will be a blessing to you whether you're down the road and you can look back and be encouraged by what God has done and you'll see kind of God's hand all the way through. That's, that's how writing that book affected me. I saw and I kind of put it down in writing, everything that God had taught me. And I was like, wow, God, this is amazing. But if you're just starting out or you're early in your parenting career, I think that it will give you a lot of great ideas and make you think about some things biblically that maybe you haven't thought about yet. 
So I will leave a link um, down below for you to pick that up. I just, I would really encourage you to do so. It is straight Bible and it was written with your family in mind because um, God has given David and I just a tremendous burden to, to, to encourage your families and to point you to Christ in every way that we can. So I encourage you this week, get in the trenches, get to know your kiddos, ask them questions, spend the time to build those relationships, and make sure that all the while, every single day, you're in God's Word as well. Have a great week. If you enjoyed this video, you've got to check out Teach Them Diligently 365. Every week, there are even more thorough videos and chats about things that are interesting to you year-round.